and welcome everybody to the first episode of Unleash the Kregel. My name is Jonathan Kregel, and I want to thank you for being here for this first episode. Now, normally, when you have a podcast, you would uh, have the person introduce themselves, give background, um, talk a little bit about the podcast, and so forth. Um, in this case, I want to get right into covering uh, a topic right off the bat on this first episode. So we'll cover some of the introduction, who I am, background, um, maybe reasons you should listen, and so forth. But this podcast, Unleash the Kregel, is my chance to, um, to just talk about a wide variety of topics, CrossFit, functional fitness, weightlifting, um, getting older, uh, being a grandparent, parenting, um, going to uh, you know, uh, some cool event, uh, uh, the latest recipe I found for my air fryer, um, both air fryer or just old recipes, uh, and whatever kind of fits whatever that moment is. Uh, the plan will be to have interviews, to have uh, a chance to talk with a variety of people, um, both in the CrossFit, functional fitness, weightlifting, but also just in general, uh, a wide variety of topics. Uh, sometimes happy, sometimes uh, uh, making you think, making you laugh, maybe making you cry, um, maybe giving you good feelings about the current, your, you know, it's currently happening or the past, um, just covering a lot of wide range of topics. So uh, there's kind of a background to the name Unleash the Kregel, but um, that's again for another video uh, I'll plan to do. What I want to do is talk about uh, CrossFit and in particular the CrossFit semifinals and games qualifications process and so forth. There's lots of videos talking about CrossFit, the semifinals that just happened and so forth. What I want to do is roll back a bit and talk about the topic that you see. Did CrossFit air in 2023 games allocations? Was there a mistake made? Now the analysis, uh, just for those who might have other podcasts, other uh, video channels and so forth, you're welcome to use this, you're welcome to reference this, um, link to it if you want. Um, the only thing I would ask is just the analysis here is mine, and uh, if you could just give an you know, just attribute it to me um, in the midst of, you know, your talk about it or discussion, just a link to the web page here, or the, you know, and so forth. The other thing I would ask you to do is, is to maybe take a moment right now, pause the video here, um, and go back and uh, just click the subscribe button, click the like button, and um, also at the very top there's a bell. Click that and click to get notifications. Uh, I plan to put out a fair amount of videos. My goal is to not bore you, but to entertain you um, with just thoughts and, and so forth. Anyway, let's, we got all that administrative stuff out of the way. So, did CrossFit air in 2023? Now, this is not something that I heard discussed at all. Um, and and let, you know, just for sake of, of uh, uh, what we're discussing here, let's go back for a second. And remember, if you're in CrossFit, uh, CrossFit came out with the 2023 Worldwide Rankings. And there was a web page um, here that you can go to that shows, uh, and basically you can read through here, but basically the, in January, they came out with the very first Worldwide Rankings. They ranked it based on your placement in 2021, 2022, and then 2023. And based on how you placed in the Open, quarterfinals, semifinals, and games, you got a certain amount of points. So for example, we'll take a look at, um, uh, let's go here to the women. And if we look, Laura Horvath in the 2020 semifinal has got this amount of points for her placement. Uh, for going to the games, she got this amount, and it was based on your placement. So you notice play, uh, people have uh, lower numbers, higher numbers, and so forth. And what they did was they gave values here based on your placement in each of these areas, and then you have a total here. And then they, they take that total and then rank the top 100 athletes based on that total um, in this worldwide rankings. And when CrossFit came out with the um, you know, the video and the article, and there's a video here that you can watch explaining the process and what they did and so forth. They were going to take the rankings and then use those 
um, and apply it through what's called the DeHaunt method. And again, I won't uh, go into what that is. You can read uh, as I go to this, the next page here, but they basically are gonna take these rankings and use those towards. So they say here, they'll be published periodically through the year for athletes to qualify and register um, for more information and so forth. Okay, so updated rankings, we added this article throughout the 2023 season. The, the idea is that this is gonna be a continually updated thing. Now, notice that this occurred uh, January 31. The actual worldwide rankings were as of March 27th. Okay, so after quarterfinals is when, and we'll go here and look, the number of game spots. So again, this was on CrossFit's webpage where they, they say that the top 60 men and women will be invited to the semifinals, uh, the top 30 and these other uh, semifinals will be invited. Each air region is guaranteed a minimum number of spots. We all know that. And then um, now that the quarterfinals round is complete, the world rank rankings have been recalculated and the final number of game spots, qualifying spots for each semifinal has been determined. Now, all that sounds good. And when it first came out, it was new. It didn't exactly make sense, but sort of, okay. So it used to be that there was only like five spots or four spots per region and and uh, and so forth when they got to, and, and they kind of broke it out to 40 men and 40 women to go to the CrossFit Games or the you know, the Noble CrossFit Games. So what they did was they took the worldwide rankings. Remember, March, uh, right after the quarterfinals are over in March, they took that and they recalculated the uh, final rankings, and if we go back here, that's what these are. So these were these were previous seasons. These are where the men sit, okay, and, and then the women. So what they did was they took all the quarterfinalists here, and they have them in this worldwide rank, and they have everybody down, down to like, I don't know, 7,000 or so. But the only ones that matter are these top 100 men and women. Keep that in mind. Okay, so all sounds great. Okay, and then what they would do is to figure the number of game spots. CrossFit used the DeHaunt method, which is a method that you can you can go back to this previous video and they discuss it. But I'll just summarize it to say they take a number here, and based on that, the highest number in each of these quadrants gets a game spot. And how they adjust it then is once you get a game spot, they take your number that's there and they divide it by the number one spot plus whatever additional spots you got. So in this case, in this case, this is CrossFit's uh, calculation off their webpage, 39 men in the North America East, uh, were the, that was the number that they found were in the top 100 of the rankings. So off that 39, they were the top number. So they're in yellow, they get a spot. What they do then is everybody else's numbers carry over. And really, I can just tell you these bottom four don't apply. This year, they don't apply. It's only these top three uh, semifinals. Um, so if we watch this, these two move their numbers to the right, to the second quadrant. North America East, they take 39 and they divide it by one plus the fact that they have one spot here. That's two. So 39 divided by two gives you 19.5. Then they go to the second number. Whoever has the highest number in this second quadrant gets a spot. In this case, Europe. Same thing, these carry over. This, the, the one who gets the spot, same thing, 30 divided by one plus this is two, means they have 15. And you continue on awarding spots to the one who has the highest number here till you get to the last step or 17th spot. Now, again, it didn't make sense initially, but okay, that's that's not a problem. The process of how they use could be argued. Should you use the dahat? Should you not? That part doesn't isn't bothersome. What's bothersome to me 
and, and should be bothersome to anybody who watches this video is the number, the first number that CrossFit used for the calculations. Why? Well, if you notice 39, where did that 39 come from? Well, CrossFit used 39 athletes who were in that quarterfinal list in the top 100 to go to the semifinals. So they are saying that 39 athletes in the East, men's East, uh, qualified to go to the semifinals. Well, that's a huge number compared to 30 and 24. So 39 athletes. And that has a big bearing on how many extra spots you get. And you'll see that. The only problem with this is it's the incorrect number. It's incorrect because of what they stated it was for. This number is supposed to be a strength of field number, showing how strong the field is compared to everybody else. Therefore, these strength of field higher numbers should get more spots. Again, from a logical point of view, it, it could make sense. But let's go back to the presentation here and talk about this for a second. First, let's do a little quiz here. We got two different men's uh, spots here. So you've got uh, uh, the uh, left side, you have a semifinal, and the right side, you have another men's semifinal. I want to quiz you on which is which, which semifinal you know, area, if you will, Europe, North American East, North American West, Oceania, uh, South America, Africa, Asia, which is which here. So let's take a look. For, as far as combined CrossFit games, first places, two. This is the combined athletes who are in this, in this semifinal. You have four second place medals at the CrossFit Games. You have four third place medals at the CrossFit Games. A fourth, and then a fifth, sixth, seventh, and ninth. You have 42 combined games appearances, and you have 10 total podiums. That's these. All right, so that's one semifinal. Keep that in mind. In this one semifinal over here, you have zero first places represented, represented, three second places, no third place, two fourth, and a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. You have 35 combined games appearances and three podiums. So which semifinal is which? Who, who, who and, and, and when you look at this, which semifinal would you say is the stronger of the two? All right, quiz is over. It actually turns out that North America West men's had this representation. And of course, you had Justin Medeiros, you had Pat Bellner, you had Brent Fikowski, you had Samuel Quant, um, you had a whole plethora of athletes uh, that were in here. Uh, Chandler Smith, um, uh, Nick Matthew. Uh, basically, you look at the, the podium and look at the top 10 or top nine, uh, and that, in this region, they got nine game spots. This North America East, they got 12 game spots. But if you're looking at it, why, why this isn't, this doesn't have the strength of field that this does. And, and, and to boot, this is one athlete basically that did a lot of this. One athlete, Noah Olson. This side had a whole plethora of athletes. So how did we get here? Well, here's the, here's the reality. The reality is that CrossFit used, and we'll go to a, another piece here, CrossFit used, remember that uh, top 100? Well, let's go over here real quick and talk about, uh, it might be a little bit small, hopefully you can view it. Uh, I can try to zoom in a bit here. All right, there we go, maybe a little bit better. Okay, so these are the, the I went ahead and sat down with that list and I figured out what, uh, what region and what athletes, and did they compete or did they not compete? And if they didn't compete, did they go team or, or such? Well, if you look at this, these are the actual numbers. So remember where I said 39? That 39 number comes from North America East. 26 people here, 13 didn't compete. 13 plus 26 is 39. So what CrossFit did was, because they based this back at the end of March and not based on actual people appearing at the semifinal, you, have a, you only have 
26 of 39 athletes who are competing in that region. And that was the, if we go to the slide that had the, you know, the, the comparison of the two regions, North America East, North America West, that's what we're basing this off of, okay? So, for example, look at, look at this, North America West, 24 athletes had, were committed to uh, uh, competing, and every single one, they all showed up and they all competed. So all 24 here. Justin Medeiros, back-to-back -back winner, Patrick Bellner, Brian Fukowski, Cole Sager, Samuel Kwan, Nick Matthew, Colton Mertens, Chandler Smith, Cole Grayshaver. Guess what you've got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's your name. That, that right there is your nine games representatives out of this region. Okay. And so what you end up with is 24 athletes. That's what they had. The East had 39 athletes after the quarterfinals, but only, only 26 of them competed individually. What happened to the others? Well, we go down the list here, Saxon Panchak, Jeff Adler, and so on. All the people that we know who didn't compete, Austin Spencer, Willie Georges, Tim Paulson, up oh, what team? Zach Watts, Jeremy Vigneault, Ben Smith, team. Alex Smith, team. Joshua Alchama, team. Tyler Lee, team. So one, two, three, four, five athletes, five, what team? But they were included in awarding game spots for individuals. Why? They are, they, they are a potential strength of field. They are not a strength of field. The fact that these guys were not in the field lowered the strength of the field and not to say anything against the guys that competed because it's a tremendous you know um hopper and and uh and uh down pepper and noel olsen and krennikov and so forth but the reality is again you you end up with uh uh this this group who while very you know fantastic athletes the strength of schedule goes down because you lose Tim Paulson, a perennial games athlete, Ben Smith, former champion, perennial games athlete, Alex Smith, been to the games. And, and so what you end up with is, uh, you end up with this, this uh, weird, uh, and actually I, I should clarify, it was Noah Olson and also Roma Krennikov, Roman Krennikov, uh, a second place also last year. Um, but again, what we're talking about here is the fact that they based it off of these numbers. 25 athletes competed in Europe, six athletes didn't, or they went team. So first, Christian, Christoph Horlath, Tiago Luzis, Kevin Jures, these were all included in the, in the rankings. These are the, the one, two, three, four, five uh, athletes who didn't compete as an individual, add that to the 25 and you get that 30 number that they base their calculations off of. You see where I'm going with this? The reality is, and the same happened in the women's side. We go to the women's, uh, you have 25 in the East, um, and try to increase the view here a little bit. We have the same thing, 25 in the East, or 21 in the East competed, yet the number that they used was actually Two, three, four, five, ten. So ten didn't compete, including Mallory O'Brien, so forth. But these people all, even though they went team, were included. So you end up with the thirty-one for their calculation. North America West, twenty-three competed as individuals, two didn't. So twenty twenty-five uh, uh, off of that number. So relative to to the actual number that that were there, the West actually had almost everybody there. Europe, 30 people competed, 30 ladies, and two did not show up. So who had who had a stronger field? Well, if you look at it, you look at the, the uh, Europe and you have Laura Horvath, Gabrielle Magana, Evan McQuaid, you have a huge, huge number here of athletes comparatively to the East, who certainly has uh, well-known athletes and well-known names. When you look at strength, you go 21, of 31 
is not the same as 31. So what does this look like? Okay, the reality is they use numbers ahead of time, and I'll get into what I think they should do for the future. All right, so let's go back to, you know, back to, to this. So if we look at this number, and actually it turns out, uh, my number's off here a bit. So actually what I, what I had here was, um, my, uh, I'm gonna go, actually, this is the presentation part, but I'm gonna go to the actual uh, page that has the number of athletes. So I'm gonna go to my reworked area here. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. So if we look at this, this is men, first of all. 39 was the original number, 24, 30, 2, 2, 1, 2. Again, ignore the bottom four here. Let's rework this. 39 originally, 12 didn't compete individually, which means you really have a, a, a new number of 27 to calculate the actual strength of field. 24, because everybody competed for the West, and 25, turns out, 30 minus 5 who didn't compete in Europe, 25. Well, if we go through the calculations, and I won't bore you with this, but I've rechecked it and rechecked it. Basically, here's what you end up with. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the spots everybody got guaranteed from CrossFit, and you end up with 6. 5 plus 6 is 11. They got 12 in the original calculation using 39. 24. That number stays the same. One, two, three, four, five. Five athletes, five additional spots gives you 10. In the original calculation, they only got nine. Again, because of these other numbers, 30 goes to 25. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five plus six, 11. So the shift that should be happening is the East, because of this, not using the old March number, but the actual who competed and who was there, who accepted. Um, actually, the West should have gained a spot and taken it from the East. And it's not so much taken, it's just rightfully theirs based on actual strength of field. And so what we end up with is, we end up with, let's go back to, our uh, presentation here real quick and let's look what would have happened east losing a spot spencer Panchek does not go to the games the west gains a spot mitchell stevenson goes in the 10th place and then europe and everybody else remains the same with their setup now it seems like a simple thing but these are the kind of things that get frankly are mistakes that just shouldn't happen you would never base a strength of schedule um, on, on the fact. Let, let me give you an example. Rich Froning, Matt Frazier, um, who else could we have? Uh, Justin Medeiros, uh, and uh, let's throw in Brent Fikowski, uh, uh, Patrick Vellner, and um, I don't know, Jason Hopper, and some others. Okay. Let's take uh, Roma Kranikov. So let's take all of those athletes and put them in a semifinal. And we're, we're, we're going to rank that particular group. Okay, so that's a heavy hitter group, uh, former champs, et cetera. I mean, you would you do look at that and go, that's, that's a dream team of sorts, uh, uh, semifinal. But let's just say that that was the pre, but when it came to actually showing up or going to the games or, or such, Rich Froning, Matt Frazier, um, uh, we're going to throw Jason Kalipa in there. Jason Kalipa um, and uh, Jason Hopper uh, decide they're not going to go. It's still a really strong field. Don't get me wrong. Justin Medeiros and, and uh, Sam Quant and so forth. But it doesn't hold the same weight. Now imagine you have a handful more go out. Medeiros doesn't you know, go there. It's still a strong field at the very tippy top. But when you're dealing with 8, 9, 10, 11 spots, it changes things drastically. You don't have as many people competing at the high level, taking points and so forth. And that's what we end up with here in just this simple math issue and, and what you use to base your game spot. No, You, you could do a preseason strength of schedule, but that's constantly updated based on 
uh, uh, the situation. Case in point, CrossFit's own uh, uh, doing. You take the open and you take those no, the numbers for the open and you qualify for quarterfinals, but those results get thrown out. You recalculate and base everything off of that next thing. When it comes to semifinals, you throw that up. You qualify people, and then based off that, you calculate off of that. Yet what they did was they took placement and, and ranking based on after the quarterfinals to decide who got to go to the games from the semifinals. What they needed to do was actually have a real uh, uh, acceptance of invitation. And yes, um, I know that there's been talk that you can compete as a semifinalist and a, a, a team and individual. But when it comes to game spots for individuals, then it needs to be determined, are you going to go individual or are you going to go team? And then based off of that acceptance, you you base your, your game spot stuff. And if people try to game it, you basically disqualify them from accepting an invitation for four or five years. Um, you don't let people game the system. And, and so people firmly accept an invitation, um, expecting that they're going to be there. And, and so you don't get into these things because, yes, would people want to be able to um, go as a semifinalist to both individual and team? Sure. Would they be able to do that? Probably not, uh, realistically. Uh, you always saw people, you know, having a hard time getting through semifinals. Um, and so I think it needs to be clearly delineated, not kind of this generalized thing uh, so that it ensures these kind of situations don't happen. But let's go to the semifinals for the women. What changed? Well, again, if we rank it off of who actually showed up, what I showed you there before, you'll see that uh, 31 were the, was originally how many came out of the East. And again, I can show this to you off of the better page uh, here. Okay, so let's go to the women's side. Uh, to the women. And East had 31 originally. 10 didn't show or didn't compete individually. They either went team or didn't qualify. And, and yet they were used. There were some who didn't qualify um, to go to the individuals, yet that number was used. So you got 31 minus 10. Actually, the number should be 21 for the East. So they actually had less than instead of the second most. And so uh, 25 minus 2 for the, uh, for the West, that was the East at the top. And Europe, 32, 2 didn't compete. So what you end up having changing here is Europe ends up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spots. So they end up with 12 the West stays the same, one, two, three, four, five. So they remain at 10 spots. But the East loses one of their spots, one, two, three, four, five, to Europe. And again, we're basing this solely off of actual numbers of competition, those who competed, not those who were you know, included in this um, after quarterfinals, but never competed. All right, so let's go back to... What the impact? Well, North American East meant one less spot was Paige Semenza didn't actually go. North America West would stay the same. Europe actually would have gotten a plus one, which meant Jacqueline Dahlstrom, who did not get to go to the games, should be going to the games. So what does this all mean? So CrossFit used numbers of those who qualified for individual semifinals, uh, or mostly, whether they competed individually or not. Like I said, if you go back through, some people didn't qualify. They didn't finish in the top 60. And what if they got an invitation, they didn't accept it and compete. So some people finished 75th or 85th or 90th. Um, and, and so we don't know if they accepted or got the invitation or not. Yet their numbers were used in the calculation because it was based back in the end of March. Some regions, as I showed, had 12 of 39 competitors not compete. Um, and it radically, radically changes the semifinal strength. And so your strength of field is, is a real strength of field, not a potential if people like Ben Smith, Tim Paulson, Alex Smith actually went individual instead of team. So the strength of field should be for actual field of competitors, not a potential strength of field if all athletes accepted. So these game spots got skewed when allocations were prematurely done. Uh, and I'm sure when it came out, it was an initial thought. But again, go back and realize that CrossFit said they would be updating these periodically through the year. 
the assumption would be that they would, when they came out with that article and came out with this stuff, they would have updated it surely before semifinals, but they didn't. They made a firm final set of, of spots based off of bad data or old data. And so really, you, you know, the recommendations is that we wait and actually get invitations. And it doesn't, it took me without having the, the data, you know, in a form that I could formulate, I had to actually print out, highlight, do a lot of extra, you know, manual work that would have been easier if I had the actual data like CrossFit does. Uh, and it would have taken maybe a few hours at most to finalize this. So the recommendation is you wait until you get invitations. You have a deadline for everybody, you know, all uh, semifinal uh, invitations have to be accept accepted by this date. And you accept either a semifinal invitation to individual or teams. And the idea that you can do both, you have to have a, a way to line up that says, this is what you're going to base your numbers off. If somebody's going to go teams, let them compete as an individual if they if they choose to. Nobody did this year, but if they cho if that's the choice that would be made now or in the future, let them do that. But do not count them. If you go teams, you can't be counted towards game spots for individual. Um, given the idea that maybe somebody decides not to go teams or not to go individual. I think there needs to be a firm line that says, if you choose to be here, this is the line in the sand. Okay. Uh, and, and then you can calculate very quickly. And the beauty part is instead of announcing in March finalized game spots, there's a little bit of drama. Um, what the actual number of game spots truly does it matter? Why does it matter? Why do people need to know what the number of game spots is, are, except for a few weeks ahead of time. Now, granted, you can't print out uh, uh, marketing material. You can print out stuff ahead of time. And maybe that's part of the decision. I don't know. But that, that, those decisions should not impact the ability for these athletes who are putting their lives on hold um, for long periods of time and, and spending a lot of money uh, simply because you have to wait to do some marketing materials or whatever else. So CrossFit needs to wait for actual individual acceptance deadline, then create allocations based off, based off that actual strength of the field. Further calculations should be done and looked at in the future because right now the calculations are based on the generalized whoever's in the top 100. But please try to convince me that uh, in the comments below uh, that the number one and the number hundred should be treated equally. Nothing against them personally, but when you have a number one ranked person and you have somebody ranked in the top, you know, who's ranked hundred, there needs to be some extra calculation of strength of field um, so that if we were to take it from a ba basketball, for those that play basketball, um, imagine ranking and saying that the, it's equal uh, to have Michael Jordan and whoever is the hundred ranked player in, you know, in the rankings of whatever, the greatest players of all time. They're both great players, but clearly there's a difference in the level of difference. Um, imagine having uh, someone like, uh, you know, using soccer, for example, uh, Manchester, you know, Manchester, uh, Man City, for example, or Manchester United. And then let's take a team that's a hundred levels, you know, a hundred down. In the, in the Champions League, but one below. Who's going to be higher strength and higher valued and higher, not so much valued, but the, in the ranking purposes, how would you base that? You're not going to say they're equal, yet in the way that the current stuff is done, that's the way it is. So those that needs to be looked at. Um, additional things like number of games podiums that are in the field, number of top tens, um, number of uh, other factors need to be included more than just simply this generic number. And then finally, release all the information that's used for determining game spots so that we know it has a person that truly accepted. Waiting until we see the field um, uh, listed uh, doesn't always show um, whether or not that's the actual field. And, and frankly, there would be even great ways to include in there some of these calculations that show where that person sits. Uh, as far as the strength of, you know, them in that field and so forth. So this is a lot to take in. Bottom line is this, 
using data from March to determine game spots for July when there's a semifinal still occurring does not make sense. It needs to be changed. It impacted Mitch Stevenson. It impacted Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Certainly good for Spencer Pancheck being able to go to the games. But if we're going to base this off of actually doing it correctly and well, it needs to be done differently. So thanks for watching. Again, like I said, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to share this, use this on your website. You're free to do so. Just give me, just attribute it to me, if you would, link to the uh, page here. Thanks again for watching. Um, and yeah, definitely subscribe, like. Uh, click the notifications. Uh, I'll be doing a bunch of videos coming up here on a wide variety of things. I felt it was really important to get this one out, though, because truly, I don't want to be sni you know, a sniping at or, or harping at CrossFit, but I want to do. I want them to do it better. I want them to do it different. And if there's a small team, it took me six hours, eight hours, let's just say, to, to double and triple check my numbers. In fact, I even corrected this uh, because I realized that I had not included I had somebody in the in Europe's men who I had did not compete who actually um, did compete so I went back and, and made sure all my data was correct if I had access to the actual data now I could probably massage and work this in and recalculate the uh, the game spots in probably four hours a couple of people with me um, you could probably get it down to two and a half so that's not very much time to do it correctly and well and that's my heart with this and you know, for those that didn't make it because of this, I'm really sorry. Um, and, and my hope is that this can somehow uh, spur a conversation to change a simple thing. Some things like judging, some things like equipment failures are not that sometimes those are just part of the deal, part of the game. And it stinks, but that's part of it. This is a correctable thing. This is an easy thing. This is a thing that should not impact people making it or not at least this year 2023 it directly did again thanks very much this is jonathan craigle for unleash the craigle we'll catch you next time take care stay safe take care of each other and i'll talk to you soon